We have the lowest percentage of adult males working now than we've had since we've been keeping good data on this. It's declined for 40 years, more than 40 years. I see a lot of kids that I went to high school with who are 25 and they have kids and they're still making minimum wage. There's no way that I want to do that. I don't want to struggle my whole life. We have to have this idea that we're going to link training to jobs that are available in the local economy and that pay well. There are places all over the country that are doing that. Traditionally, we've had our focus in getting young people a high school diploma, graduate from high school and we've done our job. We're finding that most of the jobs in the future now require some education and training past the high school level, not necessarily a four-year bachelor's degree, but some education and skills training. Without that, you're pretty much locked out of about two-thirds of the jobs and have access to only jobs that pay around the minimum wage without much upward mobility. We also have had education, I think, be very slow to change and move in the direction of where the new jobs are and what the new skills are that are needed. The ray of, of sunlight here is that businesses are willing to do a lot of it themselves because if they can have more highly skilled employees, it has a big impact on their bottom line. My official title is Manufacturing Engineering Technician. Today we got a collaborative motion robot that we're setting up. So I get to program the robot for things that we have on the assembly line. Both of my parents were in the Marine Corps. They were never together at the same time. So my dad would come home from working like a 12 hour shift and instead of getting a babysitter to watch us so he could sleep, he's just like, okay, let's watch cartoons. So me and my dad have always been really close. And my sister's like really girly, and I always like to hunt and fish and work on cars and, and stuff like that. Growing up, my mom always said, you have to go to college. No matter what you go to college for, you have to go to college for something. I just want my kids to be happy with what they're doing. We want them to be able to do and have and experience things that we didn't get to do. I didn't go to college until I was 42. I see people get out of high school and go straight into fast food or waitressing. It's really hard to find a job now if you don't have any on-the-job training or it's hard to get on-the-job training because no one wants to hire you because you don't have any experience. So I started going to Trident for industrial maintenance technologies. A lot of the kids that I went to school with were like, you're going to a tech school instead of a four-year college. That's weird. There is a cultural mindset sometimes that if you don't go get a four-year degree, you're a failure and that's just wrong. We need doctors and lawyers, but we also need welders, machinists, programmers. There are plenty of occupations right here in Charleston where you can make six figures without that four-year degree. So we got them all to the table and started talking about how we could put this together so that high school students would be able to come to the college, enroll in college classes, be hired by companies who would mentor them on the job, and actually earn a wage while they were learning in the coursework. I was in high school, so I went to high school in the morning, and then in the afternoon, I headed to the college. Me too. I was there until 6.45. Okay, so let's do the vacutainer. My school did academies, so we had like a nursing academy, a fire academy, a police academy. All of our classes were geared towards what we wanted to do. Put your hand on that knob right there. I was in mechatronics. Mechatronics is kind of like mechanical, electrical, robotics, like all combined. So when I was in math class, they taught us, you know, okay, well this is standard deviation, but this is how you're going to use it. Shannon's mechatronics teacher recognized her potential. He called my mom and was like, are you ready for me to change your daughter's life? 
The apprenticeship program is a way to encourage young generation to get interested in manufacturing and to learn a skill that they can then develop and grow into a career. We all need skills in our jobs. Students earn money while they're learning their jobs. They become masters at their jobs and they have a path forward to get certificates, diplomas, and sometimes baccalaureate degrees. I would go to Cummins for four hours a day and pretty much just do on-the-job training and shadow people. I graduated my apprenticeship in April of 2016. I got offered a position full-time, so I'm no longer an apprentice. I've got six years of college, two bachelors, and an associate's degree, and my daughter makes more money than I do. I'm 20, and I'm sitting in my own house, so it's pretty great. <laughs> The opportunity that she had to go through Cummins with their apprenticeship has allowed her to go back to school and have her job pay for it to get her engineering degree. Part of the outgrowth of evidence-based policy initiatives over the past 10 years is really trying to build the evidence about what works. By building that evidence through rigorous evaluations, we now know that there are some strategies that work better than others. We have to do high quality random assignment experiments of social intervention programs to find out what works and what doesn't. Our emphasis in the Education Workforce Committee has been, what are the results? Show me the results. If we can do that, then we can justify the spending. These programs are a big part of the solution to what I think is our biggest social problem, which is making equal opportunity that kids from the bottom can move up. The people who graduate from their program are more likely to be employed and they make higher wages. What more can you want? If we really want to have a national impact, we have to have thousands of those programs. They should be growing faster. This is something our country desperately needs across the entire nation. We started it with six companies and one occupational pathway in manufacturing. We now have 122 companies. In order to continue to scale this, we have to have a sustainable funding source. I pay attention to what works and what doesn't work. Apprenticeships, industry-based programs, those ideas are ones whose time has come. I think it's important that we use evidence and research to make policy. And in a lot of areas, we take poll tested sound bites and make policy and think we did something. There's a lot of research that needs to be done to make sure that in the jobs area, that we get the best bang for our buck. In a deficit situation, it is sometimes very easy to cut the research first. That would be short-sighted because in order to know what really works, we need to continue to build the evidence and continue to invest in evaluations over time. We don't just want to fund things that are already proven because then we won't have any more innovation. If I could talk to the politicians, I would tell them that this is money that is not wasted. Invest in education, invest in the future, when you invest in these students, you invest in all of us. Let's do it together.